Hi, I'm Tyler Van Heeren. I'm an engineer here at Statsig, and today we're going to be talking about using uh, Statsig SDKs on the client side. Uh, in particular, we're going to be making use of the Statsig React SDK today, uh, and we'll sort of be going from having a super simple React app to actually integrating with the Statsig SDK, using it for things like having a gate, being able to log events, etc., um, and really taking you through that process. So to start us off here, I have a really simple React app. Uh, really just here is our root. Uh, it has one uh, request to, to a node backend um, that it'll return and then also has another component that is like some incrementer just so that we have something a little in interactive, right? And so we're going to take this and we're going to start instrumenting it with Statsig. That'll let us do a number of interesting things. The first is sort of just control which features are available to folks using feature gates. Um, start getting into how we could then do like deeper targeting or experiments on top of those, uh, as well as talk about just like getting sort of basic instrumentation set up um, for my app here. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is obviously your app, uh, but then also an account on Statsig. Uh, that will give you access to the SDK keys for your project, uh, as well as let you start getting you know, environments set up. Uh, the other thing you will need to do as part of this is just install the Statsig SDK. Um, that's really just going to be an npm install like this. I've already run this particular command here, uh, but just you know, install it for your project. Once you've gone ahead and installed the Statsig React bindings, uh, now we're actually good to go and start making use of it. Uh, in particular, the way the Statsig sort of React SDK works is we enclose your app in what we call a Statsig provider. Um, you want this as close to the root of your app as possible. Um, really, it's just any children components of the provider are where you're going to be able to make use of Statsig. So generally speaking, as close to the root as possible is, is sort of best there. So uh, now that I have gone ahead and installed the React bindings, I can actually go ahead and do something like this. Um, where I go to my app, uh, which again, here at the root, I'm going to go ahead and import the Statsig provider, and I'm just going to wrap this with the Statsig provider in lowercase. There we go. There we go. Um, the other thing that you're going to need to put into the Statsig provider is which like SDK key we're initializing with. Um, you can find this by going in your project, and if you command K, you can actually search for things and get SDK keys. Uh, keys. Um, you can also find this by clicking on project settings and going into your keys and environments. Um, here you'll see you sort of start off with a client SDK key that you can make use of here. Um, in particular for my project, it is this, but you should of course use your own. Um, and you'll just pass that into the provider. That means that on your requests, we know it's for your project, right? Um, now I'm sort of set to start using Statsig in its most basic form. Um, the way I'll go ahead and do that is by doing something like this, um, where I'm going to make use of our hooks. Um, it makes it really easy to access the Statsig provider no matter where you are in your tree structure. Um, so in one of my sections. I'm going to do something like this, where I just call the Statsig client and, of course, import it like that. Um, and now I have this client, and on that client, I can call check gate. Um, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and make a gate called something like show counter, um, just to sort of control if this counter element is there or not. Once you've gone ahead and created your gate, um, it's really straightforward to go ahead and make use of that. Um, you're just going to take your client and call check gate on it. Um, so for this one, where I'm like saying I have a gate that's going to see if someone should have access to this show counter, uh, it'll just look something like this. Um, in particular, you want to copy this gate ID and make use of that. It'll just be sort of lowercase underscored, etc. And now I have this counter behind a gate. Um, sort of by default. Um, this gate will return false. I can sort of edit this gate to be that now. And if I go ahead and restart my app, uh, just to make sure it picks up that change that I added, the Statsig SDK, 
Um, you'll see that, again, if I go to this app, uh, yeah, it no longer has the counter there. And now I can go ahead into show counter and add a rule and say, hey, everyone should have access to this feature. 100% of people should have my counter. Go ahead and save that. And then in a few seconds, um, Statsig will sort of pick up that change. And now the next time someone comes to this page, the counter's back. Again, now I just have this sort of nice on-off switch that I can make use of. Um, and that will sort of allow us to control who sees or doesn't see my counter. I can even check out diagnostics and see when folks are coming through and actually getting evaluated for this. Um, so here I can see a call to show counter uh, what user object I evaluated with. Evaluated with. In this case, it was empty. Um, but with an everyone 100%, 0% rule, that will sort of allow you to just have that on-off switch. The next place um, where this starts getting interesting is if I want to start doing things like giving this to only certain people. Um, so with that, um, we have the Statsig SDK initialized. Uh, I can make use of it for these pretty simple on-off switches. Uh, the next topic we're going to cover is actually going and providing more information about the user so that I can do more advanced targeting than just those pure on-off switches. Um, but yeah, check out our next video for more on that topic. Thanks.